Honestly, I feel like YouTuber boxing gets a lot of bad credit. <laughs> This is why Creator Clash is a totally different beast. Not only because it is a charity event, but that the people who are boxing I actually care about. Plus, due to the lineup, I know that it's going to be a very entertaining fight in general. This is why when I heard the announcement on March 25th, I was honestly very excited. We have two main goals. Raise as much money as humanly possible for charity. And number two, we want this event to be as entertaining as humanly possible. Popular famous YouTuber iDubbbz was the one hosting it with the help of a real good touring, which I believe is Aaron's touring company. So a lot of thought was put into this event. I think we've sort of lost this with a lot of the Jake Paul events. It's kind of like, yeah, he, he can box now. Like it's no longer a mystery. Kind of defeats the purpose of it. Cause you're like, oh, well, I want to know, are they going to be good or bad? These people include iDubs, Dr. Mike, Harley, Ego Raptor, Internet Comment Etiquette with Eric, DJ Welch, Hundar, AB, Yodeling Haley, Just the Minx, Ryan McGee, Alec Ernst, Matt Watson, Dad, I Did a Thing, The Odd Ones Out, Michael Reeves, Graham Stephan. Now, who is commentating this lovely event? These people. Why am I not saying their name? Uh, because there's some people that I don't know how to pronounce their name, so I'm not even gonna try. Now, I did mention that this event is for charity, which is what piqued my interest mostly in the first place, besides the obvious lineup. About a month later, on April 13th, 2022, there's a part two to the announcement, except adding more details as to how this event is different from any other YouTuber boxing event. We are not obsessed with forcing drama on people. I, I don't want our fighters to embarrass themselves. If they do, they do. The whole thing is a mystery. Influencer boxing events are 50 to 60 bucks. I mean, this event is for you. And I agree with this. Three days after this announcement, there was an open workout on the S-Fan Twitch channel featuring iDubs, Michael Reeves, Eric, Just the Minx, and AB. We are one month away from the creator clash that iDubs, and Anissa have been working very, very hard on putting on for like a year now. We're here at a boxing gym. It's gonna be an open workout. This stream was a very comedic take on an open workout video. And I'm saying this because there were a lot of situations in the live stream that were very comedic. Minx punched S-Fan when he wasn't in gear. S-Fan was messing with iDubs by talking up Dr. Mike. I, I was watching some Dr. Mike videos, right? Yeah. Now, that is a guy, Dr. Mike is gonna, whoever he goes up against, he's probably gonna kick that dude to because Dr. Mike is on fire. There was a bunch of training with iDubs, which eventually made it into its own YouTube video. S-Fan was giving bad boxing advice, which was basically the entire stream. You don't want to block. Oh. You need to be able to take the force and rotate it. What did I say? Right. 360, so that 180, then 180 back. Okay. Right? In general, this was a very entertaining and hilarious stream, mostly due to S-Fan's improv and the reactions he got. Two days later, on the 18th of April, 2022, there was an interview about the boxing match and their training routines with iDobs and... iDobs? <laughs> with iDobs. <laughs> now, this interview is very specific and interesting for one key point. It was revealed in this interview that each fighter got $20,000 for training camp. What sort of training stipend you giving these guys? 20 grand for each fighter. That's a lot. Chump change. For training camp? For what? a dude that never fought? Idubs was paying all of the fighters to train out of his own pocket. And each fighter definitely used this money to train as hard as they could. In this interview, two of the charities were made public at this point. The American Heart Association, I think they were just the first one to get back to us. Okay. <laughs> so that's why we went with them. My wife's father uh, suffers from early onset Alzheimer's. Okay. And then we know a lot of people on the card as well who have experienced loved ones with uh, Alzheimer's. Um, month later, a lot of things happened on May 13th. There was another interview, except this time with Dr. Mike and iDubbbz. It not only showed their respect for each other, but the sport and the whole event as well. When I was watching the interview, the entire energy in the room felt like two best friends talking about boxing. And it was great, but it was nice to see this like fresh atmosphere of these two fighters compared to interviews in the past of other boxers. iDubbbz dropped the final announcement video of the event, which was this really cool individual interviews of 
each fighter with some really cool b-roll and that very classic content cop soundtrack the final event that happened on may 13th was the weigh-in and the press conference and oh my gosh a lot happened in this event i ended up streaming it on this channel i'm sure you've noticed and that live stream of the press conference got over 4,000 views so that was crazy in and of itself but anyways the introductions for everyone walking in was pretty simple except for dad bursting out the gate with enough energy to start a car <laughs> <laughs> this energy oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> After the introductions, the win portion got a little weird, I'm not gonna lie. Initially, there was no mic for the boxers, but they eventually resolved that. But those initial, like, few pairings where they were talking, but you literally couldn't hear what they were saying, that was a little bit annoying. It got very quiet all of a sudden. And it felt like a lot of people had some bits planned beforehand. It felt like every pair had their own weird thing that they were doing. I know this sounds really stupid, and I don't really watch boxing or MMA all that much. Much, but I wasn't expecting a lot of them to be shirtless when they were weighing in. But apparently that's very common for boxing. So sorry, I did I didn't know that. I'm not a huge fan of boxing myself. And even some people in the chat thought this part of the stream was a bit cringy. But to be honest, it's more of the element of awkward comedy, using awkwardness as a joke in and of itself, due to the fact that here they are actually allowed to goof off, mostly for picture's sake, of course. But I know that there's gonna be a total tone shift between this press conference in the actual fight so that's fair basically what i'm saying is i'd rather have this weird form of awkward comedy than fighters screaming at each other and actually trying to hurt one another after the weigh-in was the press conference and this had some good moments i'm not gonna lie like when dad was method acting the entire time built for this i was built in the facility in town usa programmed literally to obliterate and i will obliterate matt watts and when Minx accidentally told Dad that she loved him. Dad, I love you. Where's the camera? Dad. No, no. No, no, my dad, not you. Hey, good job. Hey, hey, my man. Bobby. Double dipping. Oh, please. Um, oh my is there security? Yes, okay, really. that's happening. Yep, thank you. you. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. This is a court. Wow. Case? <laughs> Minx, he activated his programming, his voice activated. But then it also had some, how shall I say this? Surprisingly explicit banter between Aaron and Harley. Mostly due to Harley not knowing when to shut up, which got annoying after a while. I know there's a smile on my face, but in the moment, it was very obnoxious. After the situation, there was questions from the audience. And there was this one guy that kind of just hogged the mic for almost the entire time of the audience questions. After the event, Chat and I made our predictions of who we thought was going to win. We made the conclusion that these people that I'm going to state are going to win the fight. Now here's a disclaimer, I haven't seen the fight yet because it's supposed to be in like five hours. So I have no clue who's gonna win at the time of recording this, but I'm excited. So thank you to the 4,000 of you that watched the live stream and the 150 50 of you who joined the discord server because of the stream i really appreciate it and i hope you stick around because i got some brand new content coming out soon let me paint you a picture here so i wanted to watch the event with a few friends so i figured hey why not just do a little watch party in my discord server and get some of my friends that i know and we'll hang out 10 people maximum so apparently word spread and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people kept joining the discord and the voice channel and not just that but over time, the voice chat became very racially insensitive and extremely inappropriate. Basically, everybody was breaking every single rule in the server. So basically, I've accidentally created a monster. So you know what I did? I shut it down. I destroyed it. All of these people that you see here, gone. Kicked from the server. Bye-bye. All the all the 2,000 people in the server, knock it down to about 300. So over 1,000 people I had to kick. Get away. Bye. See you later. Never go away. You caused this. So basically, the lesson here is uh, don't pirate anything, kids. I basically just gave over 1,000 people the lesson to never pirate anything. But it didn't matter because they went to some other guy's channel and watched the fight for free there. Gosh, imagine pirating a charity event. How scummy are you? Anyways, I had to get that off my chest because that actually happened. <laughs> so that was my experience. I just want to have a local fun party, but it turned into this huge, uh, racially insensitive, inappropriate monster. So uh, yeah. Anyways, now we can finally talk about all of the fights that happened. 
There were nine fights in total. The first fight being against Dad and Matt Watson. I'm not kidding you, this fight lasted like 40 seconds. It ended on the first round. I honestly don't know how it happened. Dad just kind of went in there and wailed on him and Matt was barely blocking. So obviously Dad won that fight. Round two was Ryan and Alex. They lasted all five rounds and Ryan was definitely way more beat up than Alex. At one point, the whole stadium literally was cheering for Ryan. It was honestly a close fight like I predicted earlier. But in the end, Alex won. And after this fight, the whole post interview was actually a very wholesome experience and I appreciate that. Fight 3 was Eric versus DJ, which surprisingly, even though I knew Jack Films was going to watch the fight, he literally walked up with Eric when Eric was walking down and I thought that was really cool. It was adorable to see Eric just walking with his friend, having that friendly support behind him, you know? This was the first fight with headgear, and over time, DJ won with a TKO. Eric lasted two rounds. Again, a very wholesome ending, but this time they were like hugging each other other and it was just a nice vibe. I think they were literally complimenting each other too. Fight 4. I did a thing versus the odd ones out. I wrote in my notes, his intro was funny and I'm trying to remember which intro it was. I'm pretty sure it was I did a thing. And on the odd ones out walk up, he dressed up in a birthday suit. No, not that kind of birthday suit, this one. This fight only lasted one round with I did a thing winning by a TKO. Fight five, Minx versus Haley. Now I was super excited for this fight and a lot of people were because this was known as the first ever female content creator boxing match. So it went down in the history books for sure. Minx's walkout was very entertaining. And as I predicted earlier, Minx just destroyed Haley in two rounds. At one point, I'm pretty sure it looked like Haley was crying crying and I thought that was just very funny. Even though I could tell that Haley was basically done by round two, they lasted four rounds with Minx winning by a TKO. This was honestly one of the most entertaining fights I think I've seen probably ever. Fight six, Hundar versus AB. Now this fight was very different compared to the last fight. It was a very slow fight with not a lot of punches initially, but you could tell that they were very calculated with their punches. At one point, AB knocked Hundar down, which was kind of shocking. It just kind of happened out of nowhere. Hundar eventually won by a TKO at round five. In the post-fight interview of this fight, it was very mutually respectful. In fight seven, it was Michael Reeves and Graham Stephan. Now I was also excited for this fight because I love Michael Reeves quite a lot. When Graham was walking in, he was walking into the Shark Tank theme, and that I found very hilarious because it makes a lot of sense with the content that he makes. I just thought it was very funny. And I think this is probably the only fight where both people had hilarious walk-up songs. Because do you want to know what Michael Reeves walked up to? He used the Mining Diamonds song. Yeah, yeah, that one. Because of course he did. I also saw a very interesting cameo that I was not expecting in this fight. There are about two times where you can see Jakey, Eddie, and Rumi, along with a few other YouTubers that I'm aware of in the audience. And that alone got me super excited to see that a bunch of other content creators were watching these content creators fight. It was just a very supportive vibe and I like that. But anyways, in the Michael Graham fight, Michael Reeves won by a TKO at round two. Fight eight, Aaron, versus Harley. When we first see Harley, his getup is just absolutely hilarious because he is known as the sauce boss. This is one of the heavyweight fights. Harley ended up winning by a TKO at round two. And in the post fight interview, Harley showed a lot of respect to Aaron and I appreciate that. He then does the unthinkable. He calls out Dr. Disrespect to fight him in the ring. The doc, I'm talking to you. I'm six foot six. You think you're tall? You think you're the two-time? This ain't a game, boy. And let me tell you something. That bulletproof vest you wear ain't gonna stop these guns. Think about that. So we'll see if Dr. Disrespect gets in the ring in like a year. See if that happens, calling it now. And then we had the final fight. Idubs versus Dr. Mike. They were supposed to have four rounds, but they ended up having five rounds just out of nowhere. So that was a surprise to everybody. This fight was grueling. But in the end, I kind of knew that Dr. Mike would come out on top. Although it was a pretty even match for the most part. In the end, Dr. Mike won. And he even very much respected Idubs in the post game interview. Again, I appreciate that a lot. Idubs is truly the man. I did not expect for him to put up a fight. He took a lot of damage, took it like a champ, kept coming forward. He put on a tremendous event for you guys. You all have a big round of applause. 
So the question is, was this worth the wait and the money? Absolutely. I'm so glad I didn't stream this for a bunch of people who wanted to pirate it, which means, hey, all you piraters out there, uh, you should have bought the ticket. <laughs> it was definitely worth it. Trust me. Hope you learned your lesson. This is a low-key content cop and all piraters. Don't pirate media, arg. Which is ironic because this is coming from the iDubs community. So I just thought that was kind of ironic. In conclusion, this fight was definitely worth the time and the money spent on it. All the fighters were just very respectful towards each other. And there was never any malice or drama. Everything was like weirdly lighthearted and I very much appreciated that. Plus it was for charity. So it's all for a good cause. The commentators were entertaining. Critical did a great great job, Chills did a great job, and even in between fights, they talked about each person's techniques in their fights, which gave more of an insight onto how the boxers fought. It was a very professional vibe from them, and I like that a lot. And also, just the amount of cameras and the production quality of this whole event was stellar and incredible. At the end of this whole event, it was hinted that there would be another crater clash, which if there is, yeah, I'm definitely gonna go, and hopefully I will actually be able to go and person because I watched the pay-per-view and it was great. Ha! Jokes on you, piraters. And I hope that they do another one in about a year because I think it'd be fun to go to. So thank you to everybody who created the Creator Clash. I very much appreciate you. Thank you for everybody who is participating, who bought a ticket, who did not pirate it. And I think it was a good lesson, not only for the people who are pirating the media, cause they're the worst, but also a lesson in determination. And if you want something, you gotta go fight for it. You know what I mean? These people were training nonstop and they worked their hardest and it showed. And I appreciate that. Cause they put their everything into it. Dedication is important, which I think this is a very interesting situation that all this happened recently. Cause I myself have been getting into the gym lately and I hated the gym and now I love it and so that's that dedication you know you got sometimes you got to do something uncomfortable that you don't want to do to achieve greater things so it was cool to see dedication not only in my own life but to see it in others in this event